Let's talk Notion and let's talk websites. So with everything that I do at my company, there are some instances where I don't really want to set up a web page. Okay, it's a lot of work. And I have some things in Notion that are already set up that I would really prefer if I could just use it as a website. I have some public links here for a free course as well as links to the tutorials for all the different courses I have here. And I set this up without it being on my website because well, it was just simpler to do in Notion. But now Notion announced the new feature where you can take anything that you have, press the share button, and when you go to publish, there's this new feature called site customization. And first of all, I could change none of this before. Like this is a brand new feature. We could have search engine indexing on or off for sure. Like this is definitely something that has been there. And you do have the old feature I guess old at this point, but this has been here for a while where you can like set the link to expire. But what's brand new is the site customization thing. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's pretty bare bones. I'm not going to go around and act like this is the most revolutionary website that you can have, but this is some of the basics that you need in order to take that page that you use in Notion as a website option and just level it up a little bit. So you'll notice here, first of all, you can have a share preview. Uh, it's going to be something that would be shown on the social media sites such as X and LinkedIn. When you like copy and paste a link for anything, you'll notice that there's this little pop up and you can customize that by uploading an image. And I can go into my setup here and just grab one of my Notion template banners with the Notion app system, grab one of the GFX items here. And it has to be less than two megabytes evidently. So not an option for some of the different items here. So just make sure when you're uploading it to check the max megabytes isn't over two, which is a little bit small, but kind of is what it is. So we grab one of these compressed files and this will now uh, have that be the preview instead of whatever it by default was going to pick. And then you can choose whether there's going to be a light, dark or system theme. So a system theme would be whatever your current system is working in. So that would be dynamic to the person that's logged in. I believe that's how that works because usually those are going to be dynamic to the person that is using the website, not the one who's like setting it up. So I personally am someone who would have it set up in a way that whoever is using it is better for their personal use. So I'm just going to use system. And you'll notice here that I could just change it to light or dark mode if I wanted. I'm going to keep it as system for this example. Then for the favicon, it by default is just taking the icon or emoji that you have put for your image. Um, that is the page logo, as you can see right here, similar to other pages, like whatever page logo is here, right? This is what it's going to take it from. And for me, I'd rather keep it the same. Like I naturally have it that way, but you can upload a new image if you want to. And then from there, you'll notice that there's a header option. Now, breadcrumbs are cool if you're going to kind of showcase multiple, I guess, steps and you're going to have multiple pages and stuff like that. So if somebody like clicks in this, it would show the breadcrumbs and they can go back page by page. So I like breadcrumbs. Uh, search functionality is great so they can look through it. Then this is another option for you to duplicate this as a template. I like this for people who don't want to deal with the website, um, but you can turn this on or off and then they just have the option for that. Um, if you don't want to showcase that it's built on Notion, you can absolutely take that off. And I appreciate the fact that they took it off. So I'm just going to leave breadcrumbs and search here. And you also have the ability to allow users to easily navigate to other pages on this site. So not only would I be able to uh, have it just be this page, but I could go to other pages like the setup I have down here where it's like roadmaps and requests, reviews and testimonials, examples. I would much prefer that this stuff's on the top in a header format. So let me just add these here, the FAQs, bug tracker, some of these as examples. Okay. And then that's pretty much it. Right, so that's all you can do for the most part. Uh, you can turn on Google Analytics. You would essentially have to go into your Google Analytics account and add this measurement ID here in order for it to track all the traffic. And that's amazing. You haven't really been able to do this in any of your Notion websites. The analytics have been minimal and honestly just not good. But if you're running a business, you can kind of tie this into everything else. So let's just press publish changes. And now if I press view site, rather than it just being a Notion page like it was before, you'll see the difference if I click here and here is that now we have this sub page navigation, right? Which is great. Uh, you have the breadcrumbs on the side here and it's pretty much just the exact same thing with some tweaks, being able to go into the different header pages. Uh, luckily, when using a website like this, you do have this great 
navigation functionality, uh, similar to what you have with all of the other pages. If you're just working in Notion, you have this uh, header functionality, which is great for a table of contents. The search functionality still works awesome by it filtering to the page that you're in and only allowing you to do that. And for the most part, that's pretty much it. It's a bit of an improvement from what we previously had, rather than it just being the baseline here, tracking it with analytics, adding headers, adding the ability to duplicate or remove the built with Notion branding, all of that kind of stuff is some nice upgrades. Now, this isn't gonna be perfect for a blog. Uh, in my opinion. There are other products where you could use something like feather.so. Uh, I'm very familiar with this product. They have a very lightweight system where you can basically take your Notion website and add some blog capabilities to it. A lot of people have really liked it. I checked it out when I was looking to create a blog and I have messed around with the product and think it's really cool. So if you wanna have that custom domain, like a true Notion blog, I would check out Feather. It's a really cool product. But for the most part, this update's been great. Um, you can check out the link for Feather in the description down below. It is an affiliate link. I have reviewed it before on the channel. Uh, make sure that you definitely vet this product, see what works for you. But I, I think this is a great start for a lot of people. But if you're trying to level it up, always get a website. Like this, this is great and this can save you money at the beginning, but always get a website. With that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and comment down below what your thoughts are on this new update. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.